And for more on all this, we turn to two former national security advisors with extensive experience in making and carrying out U.S. foreign policy. Zbigniew Brzezinski served under President Jimmy Carter. He's now a counselor at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Stephen Hadley served under President George W. Bush. He's now with the United States Institute of Peace and is an international business consultant. Gentlemen, it's good to have you both with us. So Secretary Clinton said today she is confident that this will not have long-lasting, uh, do permanent damage to U.S. relations with other countries. Stephen Hadley, do you agree with her? Is she right about that? Uh, in one sense, yes. I think in the short run it's going to have some very deleterious effects. One is, you know, confidential communications between our government and other governments are important in terms of making policy. And if we cannot keep the secret and the confidences of other governments, they will be reluctant to share their innermost thoughts with us. It also is corrupting because our uh, people in diplomatic posts overseas uh, want to be able to give their candid assessments about people with whom they're dealing in their countries up to U.S. leadership. It's important to inform the President, Secretary of State they will now be reluctant to be as candid in the reporting cables for fear that it will become public and harm their relationship with the country. So it's very corrupting of the process of confidence on which our diplomacy depends, both internally and with other governments. Dr. Brzezinski, what do you think the fallout is going to be? Well, you know, the best assessment I can give is to cite a phrase which used to be used very often in Vienna when it was the capital of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And when some crisis would take place, it would be said, it's catastrophic, but not serious. And this is the way I look at it. I think Steve has put his finger on it by saying that some things will pass, of course some things will endure. But I think the more serious issues are not those which are getting the headlines right now. Who cares if Berlusconi is described as a clown? Most Italians agree with that. Who cares if Putin is described as an alpha dog? He probably is flattered by it. The real issue is, who is feeding Wikipedia on this issue, Wiki, Wiki, WikiLeaks on this issue? Mm -hmm. They are getting a lot of information which seems trivial, inconsequential, but some of it seems surprisingly pointed. And what are you referring to? Well, for example, the references to a report by our officials that some Chinese leaders favor a reunified Korea under South Korea. This is clearly designed to embarrass the Chinese and our relationship with them. The very pointed references to Arab leaders could have as their objective undermining their political credibility at home because this kind of public identification of their hostility towards Iran could actually play against them at home. And I, and I want to ask you about that, because the impression is, and I want to turn to Steve Hadley on this as well, uh, Saudi Arabia has not been public uh, about its view, as, and we heard the quote from King Abdullah, that the U.S. should go after, or Israel should go after Iran and its nuclear weapons program. So what, what effect could this have now that that's out there, that it's confirmed? Well, actually, I don't think that's news. And a lot of people have been saying, without going into details and without going into these sort of sensational quotes, that the Arab states are very concerned about Iran, very concerned about the impact of a nuclear Iran. People have been saying that's one of the odd things about how Israel and the Arab states actually have common cause about their concern about Iran. So I think the fact that there is concern is not new. But unfortunately, the way it is expressed with these, uh, you know, very... Uh, uh, headline-grabbing phrases, that's what's um, unfortunate, and that's what's embarrassing, and that's what may make people a little bit less candid in their communications in the future. And what is it, what, it, what are you worried about with regard to the, to the it's knowledge? It's not a question of worry. It's rather a question of whether WikiLeaks are being manipulated by interested parties that want to either complicate our relationship with other governments or want to undermine some governments. Because some of these items that are being emphasized and have surfaced are very pointed. And I wonder whether, in fact, there aren't some operations internationally, intelligence services, that are feeding staff 
stuff to WikiLeaks because it is a unique opportunity to embarrass us, to embarrass our position, but also to undermine our relations with particular governments. For example, leaving aside the personal gossip about Sarkozy or Berlusconi mm -hmm. or Putin, the business about the Turks is clearly calculated in terms of its potential impact on disrupting the American-Turkish relationship. This is criticizing the, the people around. The top leaders, the Erdogan, Davutoglu, and, and so forth, and using some really, really very sharp language. But this is 250, th it's a quarter of a million Not documents. Precisely. How easy would it be to seed this to make sure that it was slanted seeding, a certain Seeding way? it is very easy. I have no doubt that uh, WikiLeaks is getting a lot of the stuff from sort of relatively unimportant sources, like the one that perhaps was identified on the air. But it may be getting stuff at the same time from inter in interested intelligence parties who want to manipulate the process and achieve certain very specific objectives. Do you have that concern? Uh, obviously, it would always be a concern. The, what we know, or what has been said publicly, is it looks like a data dump uh, through uh, a pretty junior level person. Um, so, in, in terms of that material, it looks like a data dump. Generally, in Washington, I've had the rule that if there are two explanations, one is conspiracy and one is incompetence, you ought to go with incompetence. You'll be right 90 percent of the time. Uh, but you can't rule out what uh, Dr. Rajinshi talked about. And if not uh, in the past, in terms of how we got here, it would be interesting, uh, and now having heard this, I suspect there will be some intelligence services thinking about maybe we could seed in these data dumps something that would be useful. You can't rule it out. But it, it has the appearance at this point of a core dump. For some reason, people get a thrill out of leaking classified documents. It's never, you know, it, it, it's whether it's a sense of self-importance, but I think it's more likely, uh, in terms of the volume, that that's what's at work. But you can't rule out, but particularly going forward, the kind of thing Dr. Bridget is talking Steve, about. A, other foreign intelligence services don't have to wait for me to make that suggestion. <laughs> I think they can think of it themselves, particularly after the first instance. What effect Possibly. do you think this will have, though, on the willingness of foreign, whether it's diplomat leaders, diplomats, to talk candidly with Americans about their views. Is this going to affect that? Well, I haven't seen anything in it that really affects serious issues that would be constrained in direct talks. It's the more sensational impacting items that can have a political significance that I find more significant. Beyond that, of course, there is a second problem, which I think is serious in this otherwise, in my view, non-catastrophic situation. Namely, it's an absolute scandal that this now is happening again. You know, the head of the Bureau of the Budget has issued an instruction to all the heads of departments to the effect that they must safeguard classified information mm -hmm. and any failure is unacceptable, it will not be tolerated. Well, this is the second instance. I would like to know what the administration has done since the first to make the second one less likely. But a lot of these documents have been in the hands. Uh, haven't they been in the hands of WikiLeaks for we some time? We don't tell Because of because of this uh, private who's in jail and accused. We, we don't know. And, and, and what Dr. Rajinsky is talking about, I think, also shows one of the dilemmas in all of this, is one of the things you like to do is to get uh, information that would be useful to people in the field out to the field. And that means fairly widespread distribution. After things like this, there is an effort, usually a reaction, understandable, to narrow down the distribution. And that could have the effect of denying information to people who could use it in their jobs day to day. So just exactly, this is the challenge. How do you try to limit the risk of this kind of activity in, go, in a way going forward while still making this information available who, to, to those who can use it, particularly in the field in their day to day activities? And, and what about asking diplomats, in essence, to spy? spy? I mean, we've learned now that Secretary Clinton and before her Secretary Rice uh, we're asking diplomats to collect confidential information, credit cards and so forth, on foreign diplomats. You're smiling. Well, yes, because, you know, look, <laughs> diplomats are supposed to be reporting. They're not, not supposed to shut their but eyes and close their the ears. Line, blur the line? Well, not really. I mean, they're not asked to do anything that is really a violation of the laws. But if they can obtain some information regarding key individuals, I see nothing wrong with it, provided it doesn't become a major task or a significant assignment. And, uh, but, but on balance, you're not worried that this changes 
the level of candor in diplomatic communication. Do you think foreigners are not doing that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm worried about the, the heads of state having their communications compromised and how willing they're going to be to talk candidly going forward. Quite frankly, there's a difference between getting information from diplomats. Of course, that's what you want. That's what you have implement diplomats out there for, is to get you all kinds of information, and you want to know the background of the people you're dealing with. That's different than stealing secrets. That's what your intelligence services do. I don't think there's a line here that's been crossed. Stephen Hadley, Zbigniew Brzezinski, thank, thank you, you both. Thank you.